Welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com. This time I'm going to talk about space elevators. These could transport people and cargo to and from orbit without using a rocket. So let's go and delve more deeply into this rather wacky idea. For over 50 years, rockets have been the only technology used to allow things and people to escape from planet Earth. However, as far back as 1895, Russian space pioneer Konstantin Tsiolkovsky proposed the idea of getting into space by building a tower that would reach up to a celestial castle. Since that time, many scientists and science fiction authors have developed the space elevator concept with the idea being to stretch a cable or tether from a ground station on the equator up to an orbital platform. A carriage with an internal climbing mechanism would then travel up the cable to carry people and cargo into space. Almost certainly, the carriage would need to receive power via laser or microwave transmission. The platform would be positioned in a geostationary orbit about 22,000 miles or 35,000 kilometers above the Earth. However, the space elevator's tether would have to extend far beyond to a counterweight that would keep it taut. In a June 2000 report for the NASA Institute for Advanced Concepts, researcher Bradley C. Edwards estimated that the total length of the cable would need to be about 60,000 miles or 96,000 kilometers. Building a space elevator would clearly be very hard indeed. But so too was placing a human being on the moon 50 years ago. The benefits of a space elevator could also be very significant, as access to space would be greatly improved. In turn, this could allow the construction of solar power satellites that could beam energy to the ground. A space elevator could also allow human civilization to obtain new supplies of raw materials by mining the asteroids or the moon. As I have discussed in previous videos, the finite resources of the Earth will not last forever. Constructing a space elevator may hence prove a critical stepping stone for the long-term survival and evolution of our species. One of the hardest challenges to overcome would be manufacturing a space elevator cable that would not collapse under its own weight. A space elevator tether would also have to be corrosion resistant and capable of withstanding the extreme cold of the upper atmosphere, not to mention impacts from micrometeorites and space debris. Until recently, no material existed with the properties required to make a space elevator tether. However, a cable manufactured from carbon nanotubes is now a theoretical possibility. In fact, in November 2018, Chinese scientists from Tsinghao University patented and published details of a carbon nanotube fibre that they claim could be used to make a space elevator cable. Another grand challenge would be constructing a suitable counterweight. Building one from materials taken from the Earth would probably require tens of thousands of rocket launches. So, a more likely option would be to locate a suitable asteroid and to transport it to the required location. Potentially, a carbon-rich asteroid may be selected that could also be mined for the materials required to manufacture the space elevator's tether. In addition to building an Earth space elevator, one day we may also construct a lunar elevator to provide access to the surface of the moon. This could improve the financial viability of lunar mining and would in some respects be easier to build as the moon's gravity is only about 17% of that of the Earth. This means that a lunar elevator could be constructed using existing materials to manufacture the cable. For example, a viable lunar elevator tether could be fashioned from the synthetic fibres Dymena or Xylon. While the cable in an Earth space elevator would be held taut primarily by the Earth's rotational acceleration, for a lunar equivalent the Moon's gravitational force would need to be counterbalanced by the Earth's tidal acceleration. 
This means that a lunar elevator tether would have to extend from the lunar surface through to a platform at the Earth-Moon Lagrange L1 point, about 56,000 kilometers from the Moon, and to a counterweight at a balance point between the Moon and the Earth. In a 2017 paper, space elevator advocate T.M. Eubanks also suggested that the logical follow-up to the construction of Earth and lunar elevators would be a Mars space elevator. This, he suggests, could have its cable anchored to the Martian moon Phobos and would provide easier access to the surface of the red planet. Over the years, several space agencies, companies and individuals have promoted space elevator visions. Not least, materials prepared for NASA between 2000 and 2003 developed the concept significantly, while since 2003, a company called Liftport has been focusing on researching lunar space elevator technologies. Between 2005 and 2009, NASA also hosted several space elevator games to catalyse technology development. Similar competitions have also taken place in Japan and Europe. In 2012, Japanese construction company Obayashi floated the ambition to build a space elevator by 2050. Meanwhile, in November 2017, the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology revealed long-term plans that could include building a space elevator by 2045. In September 2018, scientists from Japan's Shizuka University even sent two CubeSats to the International Space Station to be released into space to study the movement of a container along a cable in space. If you want to learn more, I've included a host of links in the video description. Will we ever travel to and from Earth orbit and lunar orbit and even Martian orbit using a space elevator? Well, I don't know. However, what I am certain of is that the human race needs to start thinking big and differently if we're to overcome the many environmental and resource and other challenges that lie ahead. And space elevators and space elevator type thinking may well be part of that mix. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.